Hi there and hello <laughs> and welcome to part two of my favourite finds. A bit like part one, it was incredibly hard. In fact, it was harder to choose the artefacts, um, which part two is going to deal with, and then it was choosing the coins for the first video. Thank you very much for watching the first video and for all your comments, by the way. It was, they were really nice to read. Anyway, I've finally managed to come to <laughs> sit, sit. Good boy. Anyway, I managed to narrow it down to five which was, as I said, almost impossible. I don't even know what, what two of them are exactly, so any help with those um, would be really appreciated. Ooh, here we go. Number five, we're gonna do it in reverse order again. Not chronologically this time, but just from five back to one. One being my favorite of all. It's a little Roman brooch. Now, I wanted to choose a Roman brooch because I really like finding them. And it was really hard because I found some really lovely ones over the years, ombonit ones, trumpet ones, um, enameled ones. I mean, I've been really lucky. But this one is special for two reasons. Firstly, it is one of only three I have found which are complete. It's a bit wonky, but it is complete. It's got its spring, it's got its pin, and it's got its catch. Secondly, I didn't even need a metal detector to find it. It was sitting on the surface of a freshly rolled field like that. It was like picking up a shell from the beach. And for that reason, and the fact that it had been turned round that year to be left like that, but it has probably been turned around for decades, centuries, millennia, and it's not broken. It's still one piece albeit slightly squashed a bit wonky but it's just it's it's the, it's all there um it's my fifth favorite object it's a colchester type or derivative of there's a head that goes round the spring and the pin all made out of one um piece of metal i don't technically know exactly how it's constructed but it looks to be in two sections it dates to the first century ad and as i said that makes almost 2,000 years of being rolled around a field without breaking. I absolutely love it. Number five. Number four, ooh. <laughs> it's a gold posy ring. Now, I found this really early on in my metal detecting journey. And I honestly thought, well, this is the sort of thing that you just found. You know, you found gold rings when you went metal detecting. Little did I know that it's very rare to find gold rings. I found a couple of posy rings, and this would have been about 10 years ago, but it still just remains an all-time favourite of mine. The colour of it is absolutely wonderful. It's a sort of deep orangey yellow. And the inside, there's an inscription saying, I love and like my love, spelled L-I-K, in very, in fairly early writing, I think. I mean, I think it dates to the 17th century when most of them did. And they're called posy rings from the French poesie, which means sort of poetry, um, referring to the little lines um, written on the inside. In this case, I love and like my love. Sorry, I love and like my choice. And it's just completely charming. More charming the fact that it's spelled L-I-K without the E. I mean, people just spelt things as they felt it, it, they, they should be spelt. You know, this is probably sort of, it's not a peasant ring, no. But it, obviously, by someone who wasn't completely au fait with the English language, because even then it would have been like with an E. But anyway, absolutely beautiful. Really, really lovely thing. And I feel very lucky to have found that. Number three, a papal buller. It's very much on my wish list before I did find one. I'd heard of people finding them, I'd seen photographs of them, it was just something I really wanted to find and I did. In fact the first one I found was not quite as good as this and I gave it to the landowner not knowing I would find another one but I fortunately I have and between you and me, it's a nicer one. It's Boniface the Ninth. 
Now, he was born in 1350, became Pope in 1389 to his death in 1404, I think, 1404, 1405. He was Pope during the time of the Avignon Papacy, which I studied at school, actually, even though I don't remember anything about it. He was in Rome where there was a schism and, and a load of other popes were doing much the same thing in the south of France <laughs> or something like that. Anyway, it's just absolutely beautiful. Sorry to keep saying absolutely the whole time. Someone said the other day that I say it far too often, but I can't help it. But it's, it's, it's beautiful and it's in almost perfect condition. It says Bonifacius PP9, spelt V1111 this time, not 1X or IX. And on the other side, you can clearly see the saints Peter and Paul, or rather in the order, it's Paul and Peter. Paul with a rather sort of long-ish wispy beard and Peter with a much curlier sort of, um, what, like the sort of beards you see in Roman emperors, um, a curlier beard and a curlier hair. And it says Saint Paul and Saint Peter or SPA for Paul and SPE for Sancto Peter or Sanctus Peter, whatever it might be. Um, and it would have held the cords that came down from the letter or the bull itself which would have been something important sent by the popes to whoever it was important people in other countries and this was a seal the bullet was the seal of the of of, of the letter it wouldn't have it would have the cords would have run through it on one side and out of the other um thus showing that was what it said it was on the tin a papal bull from the man himself it's just a really lovely thing in really really wonderful condition and just a very special thing I mean proper proper history you can date it exactly and we know what it was for not quite sure what letter it would have held or what statement it would have held but um but that's that papal buller number three here we go number oh number two I was hoping that some of the final five would not have been found in the last um, year and a half or so when I started doing these videos because it would you know it's nice to, to to see new things this I'm afraid was though I must have found it probably you know a good year or so ago and it is my second favorite find I don't know exactly what it is it looks like a toggle of sorts it's certainly made from a deep green bronze um, and you can see where it's been where the enamelling is and it's a sort of it's ring shaped it's not a ring it's too thick and too long and too small to be a ring it's made up of two outside segments in the middle of which are some round circles with yellow enamelling in them and on the outside of those the band on each side is hard to make out but that's red enamelling now that's got to be very, very early. Someone suggested, I don't know whether jokingly or not, that it might be a Viking beard ring. <laughs> I love the idea that it's a Viking beard ring. I wish it were a Viking beard ring. You know, I think it sort of would have held your beard like that. I don't know for sure. It looks, if I'm looking at it like that, slightly oval, as if there would have been cords going through, slightly maybe um, forcing it outwards a little bit and therefore you can see roughly where it's worn there and there I love it it's just a really really special thing it's obviously very very old it's very tactile I love holding it I don't know what it is but it's the sort of thing that I do this hobby for finding things like that really special and number one I don't know what this is either but it is my favorite thing of all and I found it about six or seven years ago in a field which is very Roman um, though I had found medieval things in it as well it's a tiny little bronze disc and on one side I can make out a rabbit or a hare I don't know which probably more likely a hare and on the other side is a mouse or a squirrel or I mean I think it is a squirrel I think there's a sort of bushy tail there anyway whatever the animals depicted are it's just an absolutely 
beautiful little piece of history. I don't know what it dates to. I've never seen another one. Someone suggested at the time it might be a gaming piece of sorts. I suppose it sort of must be. What else could it be? But again, just so unusual and so fine. And just, ah, I mean, it looks so small and insignificant. But that's my number one find. In the last 10, 11 years of metal detecting, it boils down to that that little tiny disc with a hair and a squirrel because well, I don't know why I like it so much but I do. So there they are my five best finds again rather like the coins not perhaps the most gobsmackingly beautiful nor the rarest nor perhaps the most valuable but just over the last however many years that's those are the five things that have pleased me the most thank you very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed that again as i said in the last one it was really fun to do and gave me a chance a proper chance to have a really good look over all the things that i have found which i hadn't done in a long time going through all the drawers um, and bits and pieces just to filter it down to those which was completely impossible but there you go that's them thank you very much for watching and see you next time